So I'm Andrew Turley. I'm the Director of Strategy with the National Red Imported Fire Ant Eradication Program. So fire ants, fire ants are the world's most successful tramp ant. Uh, they originally started infesting the US back in uh, 1930s and since then have spread all around the world. Uh, they were first detected in Brisbane in 2001, that's the first detection in Australia. We suspect that they were actually already here for about 10 years before that. Since that time, we've actually had a further seven uh, imports of fire ants, uh, six in Queensland, one in New South Wales and one in Western Australia. We continue to try and eradicate them everywhere where they're turning up. So these ants, they are an absolutely amazing species. They can fly up to five kilometers through their alates. When it gets really wet, they form rafts, as you can see in this photo, and the entire colony um, can float and move to a new location, as well as they can move in uh, different carriers like soil and hay and sort of anything that is good habitat for the fire ants. So what do fire ants look like? Um, so they're, some of the key characteristics is that they're variable in size. So they'll go um, from just over a mil up to almost a centimetre long. And you'll see all these different sizes in the ants. It's one of their key characteristics that distinguishes them from our native ants, as well as they'll build a mound, particularly during wind, winter or following wet weather. And there's usually not a hole on top. So there are a few of the key identifying features that we can actually um, identify them with quite easily. They're also very fond of tilled soils. So if it's been disturbed, that's where we're most likely going to find them. So the threats that they pose to agriculture. So when we think about livestock, um, they'll directly attack um, the livestock themselves. They can prevent uh, livestock from accessing water if they're heavily infested and also when you've got the young so young calves or or lambs um, they can actually kill the young as well uh, also simply by attacking the livestock it stresses them and can reduce quality and the nutrition of beef and and cause those issues when we think about crops fire ants they eat seeds roots stems fruits top of the greenery of crops so they can uh, literally devastate an entire crop if there's a heavy infestation of them there. They can also damage farm equipment by getting in there, as well as they cause a real OH and S, OH and S issue for picking. So the ants will attack people readily, and uh, rarely this can lead to anaphylactic shock and potentially death um, of people as well. So they're a nasty beast. Uh, we don't want them where they are. Um, you can see in these photos up the top, um, that's a mound in Texas, um, and you can see all those little mounds is actually fire ant nests. And if you do look down the bottom right, that's actually a site in Perga that we have since treated, but we get the same sort of effect there where you'll have heavy infestations. So currently we've the infestation in is held just within southeast Queensland. We, we have had an import in Western Australia more recently, but we believe that that one has been eradicated. Um, so where you've currently got a 10 year plan to eradicate fire ants, we're working from, uh, you'll see on the left hand side here, area one, and we're progressively every one or two years moving further and further to the east um, in a left to right fashion, trying to eradicate them. This does create challenges because in areas like um, where you can see area three and four, uh, we're not currently eradicating in there. All we're trying to do is just control them enough until the program can get there and start eradicating them. So a key point about fire ants though, is that we cannot do this alone. Um, and we really need a whole of community approach to fire ant eradication. Uh, we are looking at ways that we can better work with the community and industry to treat fire ants. Um, and there is the option for uh, everyone to treat fire ants on their own land. Some of the ways that you can help with eradicating fire ants is by not uh, making the problem worse by moving fire ants around. And 
to try and restrict the movement of fire ants, we actually have biosecurity zones that restrict the movement of fire ant carrying material. So there's two key zones here, one's in the yellow and one's in the gray. Um, I'm not gonna go into the technical detail of the restrictions, but basically it restricts the movement of fire ant carriers uh, both within and from within to outside of these zones to try and keep the fire ant problem where it still is in Southeast Queensland. So you can help us by stopping the spread. Know what the fire ant zones are. Know that there's a likelihood that fire ants will be detected there and know that you can't move fire ant materials um, unless you follow some specific guidelines. Um, understand what materials carry fire ants. Follow the movement control regulations and know how to identify them, what their nests look like and those features I mentioned earlier. You can also help by reporting fire ants. So if you are out on your farms and you detect a fire ant, please report it. They are a restricted category, um, uh, category one restricted matter, which means that you need to report them within 24 hours being found. Um, even if you treat fire ants yourself, as is an option, you are still required to uh, report the fire ants. Um, this is really so that we have an idea of where they might be and the risk of fire ants uh, here may, be, may indicate further risk of fire ants elsewhere or around the property. And finally, you do have treatment options for fire ants. So you can treat them yourself. Um, the baits and products available for treating fire ants are widely available. Um, you can hire a licensed pest manager. Uh, we regularly train pest managers in how to effectively treat fire ant infestations. And you can also request treatment from the program. Uh, that's as simple as calling 132523. Um, and you can report and the program will come out and treat the fire ants um, that you have reported. Furthermore, we also have the ability to train you and to work with you on how you might want to treat fire ants yourself. So if you do want to talk to us about um, getting some fire ant treatment training, we're more than happy in that. Again, just give that number a call, 13 25 23.